Welcome to Quill Flocks on American Barns. I'm Eleanor Burns. Well, meet my chickens, Peanut Butter and Ruby. Now this one has the perfect color of feathers for Peanut Butter. Ooh, and I love her dark necklace. You're just so pretty, Peanut Butter. And this one is Ruby. Ruby and I are very close because my birth month is July and my birthstone is Ruby. Well, Ruby is a red comet chicken. You know, these two together are going to help me show you how to do two blocks today. First, we're gonna do hens and chickens. This is the 12 inch block in beautiful greens and reds and then a yellow background, 12 inch and the little six inch. And the second block is corn and beans. This is the 12 inch block, pretty tricky. And we also have a six inch block, colors of green and yellow again. Well, this quilt is for you two girls. Take a look at it. Well, the hands are green and the chicks are red and that yellow background sure sets the patches off. Well, Amy even quilted feathers all over the quilt. You know, these chickens love to eat corn. And according to the Iroquois legend, corn, beans, and squash are three inseparable vegetables that just grow and thrive together. You know, they're known as the three sisters. Well, the corn provides a natural pole for bean vines to climb. And then the beans fix nitrogen on their roots, improving fertility of the plot for the next year's corn. And then the bean vines just help stabilize the corn plants, making them less vulnerable to blowing over in the wind. And then there's the squash. Well, they're shallow rooted and they become the mulch. Now squash also keeps the weeds from coming up and prevents moisture from evaporating. You know, sounds like the three sisters do good things together. And then at the end of the season, they're just plowed under. All makes perfect sense. So let's make some perfect sense out of these two quilt blocks. The hens and chick block hangs on the Gothic barn owned by Randall and Dorothy Kraft. They've owned it since 1960. Now it's in Sac County, Iowa, built in 1949. And what's great about it is that this is still the original siding. Well, they have asphalt on the roof right now, but if you look, you can see the conveyor here, the cupola here and unbelievable. There are very tiny lightning, lightning rods right on there. You can hardly even see them, but it's really cute. I love it. You know, everybody loves chickens and I'm always getting them for gifts from a little one to wear. So cute. And this polka dot chicken. These are for your Christmas tree ornaments nonetheless. I absolutely love my egg beater, very useful. And then the little creamers all in a row. And there is even a chicken that dances. Hysterical. Well, this is the block. So what's really fun about it is that you make two units at the same time. It's like just doing like half a block. So if you can do a quilt in a whole day with this block, a quilt in half a day, it's really fun. Four pieces are repeated and then it's just lattice and center square right in the middle. So let's get started. These pieces right here, the little chicks, these little red guys come from pieced triangle square. So just take a yellow Put it right sides together to the red. This piece is three and a half by seven. So just take your ruler, find the middle part of it, draw a straight line right down through, and then with the same ruler, you can just turn it, line up that diagonal line on the ruler with the straight part on the rectangle, and just draw your diagonal lines. The marking is very quick. See? It's quilt and a half a day already. Now put your quarter inch foot on your sewing machine. I am using a scant quarter inch. And so it's actually set, my machine is set 
at 4.0. So when my bar is on the line, my stitching is just slightly less than a quarter inch away. And then just turn it and go down the other side. Now, you can go ahead and cut your threads, turn your whole unit around, put your bar back on the line, and so another quarter inch away. So the distance between the two stitching is a half inch. Well, it's interesting about this called hens and chicks because they've named them other names as well. This flock goes by fox and geese and also by ducks and ducklings. It's kind of like pairs. Everything is done in pairs. So I've got my little jumper scrap on here so I don't jam. Let me pull that off. Now, my stitching is done, up and down. Okay, straight up. I'm gonna cut it just the way I marked it. So, let's just lay the ruler like this and go up, down, and I'm gonna square these to a very unusual number. I'm gonna square it to two and seven eighths. That is a tricky one. So on the six and a half inch triangle square up ruler, turn the ruler so that one is at the top, two, and then go along these little lines going down the sides. Go down from two down to seven eighths. And it's gonna be that green dash line on both sides. So take that green dash line and put it on the stitching lines. You just have a little bit extra. Just trim up one side, turn it down the other, and while you're trimming, how about just cut off those tips? Okay, I need to have two for this process that I want to show you. I'm going to do just half of it because I already have some done. So I'm only going to square up two of them. You need to square up all four to finish this block. Okay, off go the tips, gather these up, get rid of them. Now I want to set the seam with the dark on the top and then just open and press right into the red. Looking good. These are the chicks. Cute little chicks. Just like Ruby. So set these aside. You're going to do those later. Now lay your uh, chicks so that the red is in the bottom right hand corner like this and we're going to take rectangles they are two and seven eighths inches that same length as well so just flip them right sides together like so and just sew right down along here I'm going to get my little jumper scrap going because sometimes it's really easy to jam so line these up Follow along one behind after the other. I, I have had such a great relationship with chickens ever since I was little. Oh, we went to the carnival one time in our town. Such fun. At the carnival, there's this little game where the saucers were floating in water. And if you tossed a penny and it stayed in the saucer, you won a chicken. So, of course, I won a chicken. What fun! We even named it Pepino. Okay, now I'm just going to take this, set the seam with this rectangle on top, press open like so, and this is the first part of sewing two parts at one time. So, we want to have one little chick in the corner. So, let's just take these. And we have two chicks. Flip this right sides together and get it all lined up right along here. And just sew them together. Now, not only did I have a chick when I was a little, little girl, it ended up at my grandma's, at my grandma and grandpa's farm. But when I was student teaching, I taught third grade. I decided that we should incubate chickens for 21 days and then watch them hatch. Quite a learning experience. Well, I showed up on a Sunday when they were about to hatch. I stayed all day. I could not believe how long it took for chicks to hatch. Okay, now with this little piece, we can check it out. Looks pretty unusual. But right here, you want to take and fold the seam and just clip to the stitches. That's so 
that both pieces can be pressed away from the chick. I'm going to go from one chick over, turn it around, and do the other chick. Check on the right side, looking good. Now comes the hen. The hen is the green part. So I have a green piece, and I'm going to be really lucky if these are exactly the same size. Looking good. So take and place these two pieces right sides together, get a ruler with a diagonal line on it, and place that diagonal line down the left side, and just scooch it around, line it up, so that the edge of the ruler just touches right at that seam. Perfect. And then start in the middle, draw out to one corner, draw to the other side. Okay, that's your stitching line. Turn this piece around, do a second line, starting right here, up and down. Well, that is the stitching line, and I already have one that's stitched on. You start in the middle, zoom down, turn around, and go back up. Now you get to see the magic of this two-part block. Put your quarter inch line on the stitching, cut it in half. You've got one part of the four. Turn this piece around, put your quarter inch line on the stitching, trim, get rid of that, and your block is done. Look at that, that's very cool. So then just press your seams towards the hen, cut off these tips right here. You've got two of them. You need to make your second set. Of course, I've got them ready. And this is what it looks like. Start and put your little corner square right in the middle, your uh, cornerstone. Take your lattice and put it off that little center. One, two, three. I love the bright yellow. Really sunny, good disposition. The greens go in here like this. And this is the miracle block. And just lay it out like that. Sew the lattice, and you're done. The corn and beans block hangs on the Payson family barn in Sac County, Iowa. And it's just such a great bright green and yellow and black. I love this. Now you can actually see the board and batten is the original wood on the barn. And this is a salt box roof. It's perfect. And believe it or not, there are more lightning rods up along there. You've got to look really close. What well, used to be for livestock, but now they just do it for storage. Well, that's too bad, I love that barn. Well, this is the block, really fun. Corn and beans, here's the little ears of corn. Here's the beans in the center, and you're gonna be surprised. You already know all these techniques to put this together. Now, the fun thing is that this pattern was printed in the Ladies Art Company. It was out of St. Louis. I know this poor thing looks pretty bad. I think the silverfish got at it. But this pattern was printed prior to 1895. That's old. And it was their 100th pattern. What a celebration. So here it is right here in black and white. If you can look and see the drawing, corn and beans. And it looks like they did it out of calico for 25 cents or silk for 55 cents. Wow, that's fun, huh? Corn and beans. A little complicated, but you're going to know the techniques. The center is just like our hens and chicks. It starts out with those rectangles, only they're a little bit smaller this time. They're just three by six, do the diagonal lines. This time, square this patch up to just two and a half, a little bit smaller. And then you do the same thing where you sew them together, two pieces together, draw the diagonal lines, but this time you use a white on the opposite side and a green on the opposite side. So if you already know those techniques, that's the fun part about quilting. You can just build upon each other. So I'm just going to cut these apart 
and show you how they go together in the center. Okay, trim down one side, the other. We've got this little slice right in the middle that comes out. Well, I love corn and also so does my granddaughter Ellie. She was about six months old sitting on my lap chomping away on my corn. We were all laughing, not many teeth. Okay, so now I've got two greens and two whites. So still, you put them on your pressing mat, you set the seam with the large triangle on the top, open and press into it. So it makes a very interesting center with the two different colors. Now these little patches are squared up to four and a half inches. You can do it with the six inch square up or we have the fussy cut that's only four inches. Good start, it's the middle. Okay, so now put the whites opposite each other like this and the greens opposite each other. Good start. Now around the outside edge we're gonna do the flying geese patch, and you have already seen that as well too. So I'm just gonna go through that very quickly. It starts out with two different sizes of squares. This is a five and a half and a seven for 12 inch corn and beans. You draw a diagonal line and sew on both sides of the diagonal line. And then you just take it, cut it. Such an unusual looking patch, but it's a lot of fun. This time, you just turn over towards the large triangle again. Oh my gosh, I get going so quick. My nails are so good for doing this, but you can take it to the iron, press it as well. These two pieces go back right sides together. You match up the outside edges, just look for the goose tails on the ends. And then this is what it looks like, another diagonal line stitches on both sides. And then once you sew, you just go ahead, cut it in half. And you're gonna see those geese in just a minute. So from half of it, you actually have two geese. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on this patch. Fold it in half, clip to the stitches, so that you can just press into the two sides of the geese. Okay, this is already pressed, so zip right in here. Make that flat, turn it around. This is geese in about two seconds, huh? Well, now this patch is squared up to two by four. I'm using our flying geese patch number one from our mini geese ruler set. Cut it in half like this. Trim on all four sides. Let me just turn this around just a little bit more and only have the bottom half. All right, that's good. Nearly all done with all the patches. I have three more to square up, but I just want to show you this and then I'm going to sew it all together. This is a little yellow square and cut it on both diagonals. And then you have the geese like this and the yellow squares, one on each half, go like this. Ooh, you've got to make four just like that. Let me get my sewing done and I'll show you how to finish it. I sewed my whole center together and then I did that little magic swirling trick so that the center lays very flat. Then I made these four units with the flying geese. I sewed one on each opposite side. Got two on. The third one is right here. And this is the last piece left to go. We'll take your ruler, and just cut off those tips hanging out. Do a little sliver trimming if you need to. And the magic is, they seem locked together. So right here, when you flip them, this matches right here and this matches right here. So flip them right sides together. And I find the best way is to sew them 
with this on the top. That way you can actually see your pieces and you know exactly what you're getting. Because when you look at the right side, you want to have it nice and crisp, sharp as can be, just like an ear of corn. And also whenever you do locking seams, you can just stretch a little bit, make them line up right here, hold this seam flat, stitch over it, very bulky. Ooh, but this is good. This is coming together. And all you have to do now is press this out, do a nice flat pressing, cut your five and an eighth inch squares, two background squares in half, and then just put on all four corners. Okay, it's gonna go like this, right side up, one, two, looking good, three, I've got to cut off that little jumper, and four, perfect. Corn and beans and hens and chicks, sounds like dinner to me. It's fun to just hang out with the chickens and watch all the comical things that they do. They are very relaxed and very social. You know, they just cluck around and dutifully lay an egg every day. In the 1940s, a farmer's wife captured the annex of pairs of chickens and roosters. Well, this was just a top when I got it. Now, possibly it was a tablecloth for a harvest table because it's long and the pattern goes in both directions from the center out. You know, it was used a lot because there are plenty of holes to fix. Amy Potter quilted it with chicken wire design in the background. Well, you can almost tell by the way they cock their heads or pose their bodies or just strut around what's going on. Now, these two are happy with each other. But in this block, she looks like she's given him the what for. Well, I can imagine the quilter just cutting the pieces out at the end of the day, and then she finished the raw edges by hand, sewing a blanket stitch around the outside edge. Well, everyone enjoys this antique quilt so much that I created a new one. Well, they're certainly fun to look at. I set them together with stripe lattice and nine patches in the corners. Again, Amy quilted chicken wire in the background. Well, the fabric is even chicken wire, lots of chicken wire. But I have some quicker techniques to show you. Well, first of all, I had the chickens and the roosters printed on paperback fusible web. Now you can certainly trace your own on the paper side of the fusible web and then reverse the patterns so that they change the way they face each other. It's just lots of fun to do. Here, Ruby, you take care of my paper, okay? I'm gonna put this right over here for you. Well, rough cut around the chickens and roosters and then place the fusible side of the paper against the wrong side of the fabric. And then from this paper side, just fuse it in place without steam for just two seconds. Now don't do it any longer or you may melt the fusing so it won't stick again. Well then, you just cut out, you left me, huh? Fine. Well then just cut out the chicken or the rooster on the lines. You need to have a nice sharp pair of scissors just going in and out, getting this all done. You know, these chickens have been hanging out with me all day and I cannot believe they are making me feel calm. All right, I just have a little bit more, but then you just take and you just, I run my nail along the edge. You could take a pin, Scratch the edge so that you can just separate the paper from the fusing and then you see, you see the fusing on the back. It's that simple. You know, this is easy enough that even your children or your grandchildren can help you. I can't wait until Ellie, Jonas and Kylie help me. So just peel the paper away and it's ready for fusing to the background. Well, I used a 14 inch by 18 inch piece of chicken wire, wire fabric. Just 
place the chickens and roosters on the background with the fusing next to the background. And then remember to get those red crest and wattles positioned just so. Well, this time, you can hold the iron on the pieces for up to 10 seconds. To finish the outside edges, you can sew a satin stitch. This is a satin stitch, which is just a tight zigzag around the outside edge. Or you could do it the old fashioned way by hand, or you could do a machine blanket stitch around the outside edge. That's exactly what it looks like. Just rev up your machine, do the stitching, get it done fast. Well, the lattice and the cornerstones are strip pieced. The lattice is made of three strips, the black, the red, the black, and then the nine patch has to have a second set of strips, the red, the black, the red. Cut off two inch strips off of each one of them and that's all that you need to do to put together your little nine patch. It's just stripping, so much fun. So relax, just hang out with some comical chickens and enjoy your quilting.